a city in nature. That's what Singapore is famously known as. And when you think green spaces, you usually think of Gardens by the Bay or the Singapore Botanical Gardens. However, there is a greener side that is right within our heartlands. Looking past the lush greenery in our city, you'll find that there's so much more to what green means within our neighbourhoods. Dig deeper and you'll find communities championing sustainable living in this urban city. Hello, I'm Martin. And I'm Jacinda, owners of The Breakfast Club, a home-based farm-to-table food service. Sustainability has always been a huge part of our lives. Before The Breakfast Club, we were living in a van, road tripping across Southeast Asia. And during our travels, we learned a lot about sustainability in the form of plant-based diets, reforestation, and living a zero-waste life. But after establishing The Breakfast Club, we realised that there are many other unique places and individuals like us who are pursuing their passion in Singapore and building a community of sustainable living. So join us as we explore the greener side of Singapore to see what these places are all about. So most of us think of farms as big open fields in the countryside. However, there is a farm that we can get our produce from that is right in the heartlands of Queenstown. In the past, Queenstown used to be a village where people would cultivate vegetables, grow fruits and real livestock. Wow, a lot has changed and Urban Farm has once again made Queenstown their home. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I work at Edible Garden City helping with the marketing and PR. Edible Garden City really wants to bring Singaporeans closer to our food source and to encourage Singaporeans to grow our own food. How we do that is through outreach methods uh, using spaces like this farm here at Queenstown. Many of these plants that we grow are regionally native or endemic um, that our grandparents used very frequently. But now that you know, we have been westernised, we kind of have lost touch a bit. So we're trying to bring back that connection with uh, heritage foods. The unique thing about EGC is that we really believe in the social aspect of urban farming. So of course, by growing our own food, we tend to eat better, but we also get to you know, build community bonds with our neighbours, experience nature in a more intimate, closer way. And all this will encourage us to be more sustainable and to care for other living things, care for ourselves a little bit more as well. Edible Garden City also runs workshops and tours that the public can join. And some teach you how to grow special crops that you can even plant back home. That said, we don't get all our produce from just Edible Garden City. I have a friend who runs a small community farm in Kembangan. Marcus is one of the people we've met over the years who shares the same philosophies as us. He runs Habitat Collective and has successfully championed urban farming in his own way. More than just an edible garden, Habitat Collective is a mission for more people to live sustainably in our environment. And one of the ways he's approached this is through permaculture. Hi, I'm Marcus. I started this food forest here in Jalan Senang Community Garden three years ago. So permaculture is short for permanent culture. And it's a set of design principles, ethics and practices for developing sustainable human settlements. So we grow quite a lot of food here. We've Try to invite the community into this space through having um, garden fest once a month. So we use our garden fest to kind of share this food or share the produce with um, the people in, in the community. Whoever visits during our garden fest can take however much they want. There's no price to anything. It's just if, if you enjoy your thing and you value what we do, then we do accept donations. And during these fairs, we, we share through a guided tour the philosophy of how we grow food and the design principles behind, you know, how we do that. At the same time, we also try to be a place for people in the neighbourhood to be able to cycle back their food waste sustainably. So neighbours can bring down their food scraps every weekend. And we have um, quite a large scale composting here in this community garden. And whatever compost we create gets cycled back into the soil which feeds the soil and then the plants. Marcus was kind enough to give us some fresh produce that he prepared for the garden fair. And now it's time for us to show you how we prepare these precious ingredients that are free from pesticides and other chemicals. So as you can see, all the produce we have gathered here come from the urban farms we visited earlier today. And by simply supporting local, you're already adopting a more sustainable lifestyle. So today, we're making our sunny pesto ulam rice cracker. 
And so, first we need our rice crackers, of course, and then our pesto, which is made with curry leaf. And we've also got microgreens and edible flowers, all grown in our local garden. Sustainability and eco-wellness are some of our personal core beliefs, and that's how we approach the breakfast club and the food we make. During our travels, we've seen how sustainable living has benefited the local communities. And so, we decided to bring that back home with the Breakfast Club. This is why we aim to build up a supportive ecosystem of like-minded individuals who share these lifestyles and passion. The Breakfast Club serves as a hub and safe haven for the community to learn and grow together. But looking out for the environment involves more than just food. It's about maintaining a healthy environment for some special residents in our neighbourhoods. So our last and final destination is here at Pasir Ris Park and we'll be meeting up with Dennis who runs interesting eco-tours. So I'm Dennis from Untamed Paths. Untamed Paths is an organisation that runs eco-programs specialising in nature and wildlife. So we get participants into green spaces in Singapore uh, to allow them to appreciate uh, nature and wildlife in a respectable manner. Many people, when they think of Singapore as a, as a country, as an island, right, it's like, oh, we don't have much wildlife. They think about the casinos, MBS and stuff like that. But in reality, we actually have a lot of animals, marine terrestrial, right, they all need um, a bit of help, right. Um, in these programs, we try to raise awareness for the biodiversity that often gets uh, overlooked. So, Antim Paths, we actually want to influence people, um, to get them to think and reflect about these animals that live amongst us. Awareness is the best form of conservation. You know, if people are not aware that these animals are living with us, right, they would not make conscious steps um, to actually make changes. Right? And also, we want to showcase the biodiversity in Singapore. Right? So we want to actually like, put um, Singapore on the map and you know, try to raise the interest in wildlife. It's hard to believe that there is such incredible wildlife so close to where many of us live. You wouldn't think twice that these creatures are around us, but they have such a huge impact on our ecosystem. Next time you take a walk in your own neighbourhood park, be sure to look a little closer. Starting your own journey to a more sustainable lifestyle isn't as inaccessible as you might think. I love how the eco-community in Singapore has grown over the years. There are many passionate heartland residents that are more than happy to share their knowledge. You just got to know where to look.